So the main uh, argument that I would make, uh, and I'll uh, walk you through some key studies, is target therapy with just triplet combination should be what should be considered for our patients with metastatic BRAF, v 6 d mutant colorectal cancer, and I'll uh, show you why. Um, early, uh, so in terms of uh, the, I just have one slide, and I'll walk you through all key studies. So this is a story of precision medicine, so bear with me. So here I'm showing you data which has led to why full fox CD with BEV, which Dr. Angola argued in favor of, has been the standard of care for first-line treatment with, for patients with BRAF v 6 d mutant cancer. But on the columns on the right, what you're seeing is, is how precision medicine has truly evolved for this subset of patients with BRAF v 6 d colorectal cancer. Often, you know, in the world of individualized medicine, the naysayers would say, well, the BRAF is not a real target because the BRAF in melanoma, the same BRAF doesn't behave the same way in colon cancer, and that was truly the case over the last decades. Uh, as Dr. Van Kusten this morning pointed out, the studies with BRAF inhibitors alone, the studies with BRAF and MEK in combination, while it almost doubled the responses and survival in patients with melanoma, and even earlier this year, data in cholangiocarcinoma showed the same results. However, for patients with um, colorectal cancer, it never showed anything. And the reason for that is that on the RAS-RAF pathway, the reason why the RAF inhibition or the MEK inhibition, even a single agent or as together, didn't work is upstream there is upregulation of EGFR, and what happens is the, pi the pathway is bypassed through downstream upregulation of CRAF. So what was needed was upstream blockade of EGFR. So you needed to block the pathway at three different levels, block the EGFR, block the RAF, block the MEK, and that's what led to the Beacon study with the binimetinib, encorafenib, and cetuximab highlighted at the right end of the slide. Um, what I want you to sh see is, you know, as you add EGFR alone, as opposed to adding EGFR with RAF, which was uh, Dr. Kopa's study, which is also now incorporated into the NCCN guidelines, the SWOG 1406. Uh, what that shows is you go from a PFS from like a couple of months to four months to eight months, just the progression-free survival beating the historic overall survival. Yeah. Same goes with uh, overall survival, you know, a few five to ten months with just chemotherapy. Then you're moving towards 15.3 months, which was the question in one of the previous sessions. Now, if you compare that with Fulfox C with BEV, the initial data from the TRIBE study, the overall survival from that study as well as a non-randomized phase two, the overall survival coded was in the orders of 19 to 20 months. So granted, that's higher, but remember, that's first-line treatment. And on the right, you're seeing patients who were treated second-line and third-line. So the fact a second or third-line chemo-free combination is achieving an overall survival of 15.3 months, if we extrapolate it to what's going to happen if you bring this up to first-line, it will beat chemotherapy, in my opinion. The reason for that is even if you look at the data for patients who had more than two lines of chemotherapy or three lines of chemotherapy, the survival uh, and the responses were better if you hadn't received more chemo. The other reason why I do think why the triplet chemo-free combination will become the standard of care for first line, and I will point out to the discussion that was happening last session, Folfox CD is a triplet chemo. Uh, in terms of, if you look at the median age of these trials, so look at Folfox CD with BEV, the median age was 53 range to 53 to 67 years of age, as opposed to patients who were getting on to the RAF or EGFR doublet or triplet, look at the range. You know, there were patients upwards of 80 who the investigators, in their opinion, were comfortable in enrolling them into the beacon triplet combination, but as opposed to full Fox CD with BEV, as you heard some of our experts even in the last session, even upwards of 60, 65, or anybody with not a reasonable performance status, triplet ke chemo was brought into question. So the fact that, and then the other point of, uh, to remember is, BRAF, if you look at the numbers, less than 30% on average are less than 60 years of age. There is gonna be at least 40% who will be above 70 years of age, and you know, as you can see, our curves are shifting to the right, there will be more and more patients who will be diagnosed with BRAF, metastatic colorectal cancer, later in their lives. So in that scenario, if you had a triplet chemo-free combination as opposed to 
uh, a triplet chemo with BEV. Um, in terms of what will become the standard of care, I think it's going to be a first-line uh, target therapy. Um, one additional point that I wanted to highlight is there was another study that was published recently, which was with uh, the BRAF, and Trimatinib, and Panatumab, again, a triplet chemo combination. Again, that did show results, uh, but not as impressive as the beacon combination. And one of the discussion point there is not all RAF inhibitors are the same. So just like not all mutations are the same, not all mutations in different tissue types are the same, even the drugs that you choose for your combination makes a difference. And that's where, you know, it has been through these slides over the years, uh, through these studies over the years, you truly see the evolution of precision medicine when it comes to the subset of patients uh, with BRAF metastatic colorectal cancer. And uh, with that, uh, we'll see if the audience response changes uh, to targeted therapy becoming the first line for these patients. Thanks so much for the opportunity.